Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about some of the releases coming out in March. Now, as a quick reminder, before we jump in, the Book of the Month prediction video that I've already released for March also contains a bunch of new releases that are coming out. I'm trying to prevent overlap in the information that I'm providing in these videos, so I'm not talking about any new releases in this video that I've already talked about in that video. So please be sure to check out that video for more incredible new releases coming out in March. But with all that being said, March is a pretty big publishing month. There are a lot of releases coming out. I do have about 14 or 15 additional new releases to talk to you about that I think you might be interested in or that I am personally interested in. In. So we are just going to go ahead and jump right in. Now, as per usual, I'm going to try to give you just a brief amount of information about these books so that you can make an educated decision on whether or not you want to add them to your TBR. If there's just a brief blurb available, that's what I'll read. If the synopsis is short, I will read that. Whatever I can do to give you the information that I can about the books. All right. So as always, we are starting with the first Tuesday in March, which is March 5th. And the first book I want to reference is a new release from Lisa Unger called The New Couple in 5B. Now, I've actually never read anything by Lisa Unger. I know that she is a pretty popular thriller author. She recently released a book called I think it was like Secluded Cabin Sleep 6 or something like that that I've been hearing a lot about and so when I saw that a new release was coming out from her I wanted to mention it here just in case you are interested in her as an author. This says Rosie and Chad Lowen are barely making ends meet in New York City when they receive life-changing news. Chad's late uncle has left them his luxury apartment at the historic Windermere in glamorous Murray Hill. With its pre-war elegant and impeccably uniformed dorming on the building is the epitome of old New York charm. One would almost never suspect the dark history lurking behind its perfectly maintained facade. At first the building and its eclectic tenants couldn't feel more welcoming. But as the Lowen settle into their new home, Rosie starts to suspect that there's more to the Windermere than meets the eye. Why is the doorman ever present? Why are there cameras everywhere? And why have so many gruesome crimes occurred here throughout the years? When one of the neighbors turns up dead, Rosie must get to the truth about the Windermere before she too falls under its dangerous spell. So this is actually giving me Lock Every Door vibes by Riley Sager. That is actually one of my least favorite Riley Sagers. So I guess we'll kind of have to see whether Lisa Unger can provide a new twist to it and what her take on this trope is. But it definitely sounds like there's something suspicious going on in the building. So it sounds like this new couple is going to be in for some surprises at this apartment building. Again, if you like Lisa Unger, this is her newest release coming out on March 5th. Also on March 5th, I did want to quickly mention that the second book in the Stolen Air duology by Holly Black called The Prisoner's Throne is coming out. I'm absolutely not going to say anything about this book because not only is it a second book in a duology, but this duology is kind of a sequel duology to the Cruel Prince trilogy by Holly Black. And so I really don't want to risk spoiling anything for that trilogy or this duology. But just know if you are interested in this duology, the final final book comes out on March 5th. Another sequel coming out on the 5th that I personally am highly anticipating is the newest in the Finley Donovan series by El Cosmano called Finley Donovan Rolls the Dice. I have read all three of the books in the Finley Donovan series so far and I just enjoy them immensely. If you're not familiar, this follows our main character Finley Donovan and she is an author of romantic suspense and in the very first book she's actually going over the plot for her newest novel with her editor or publisher and somebody overhears her and accidentally mistakes her for a hitman and this person wants Finley to kill her husband and shenanigans ensue. It is a wild and wacky good time. It is full of really lovable quirky characters and you just cannot even imagine the stuff that Finley Donovan and her psychic Barrow get themselves into. So if that sounds something that could be right up your alley, I highly recommend picking up the Finley Donovan series because it is truly a good time and I'm highly anticipating the sequel coming out on the 5th. Well, it seems like March 5th is a day for sequels because the final book that I actually want to talk to you about is another sequel. It is a new book by Tana French called The Hunter and it is the second book in her Cal Hooper series. You may be familiar with Tana French because she wrote the Dublin, Ireland murder squad series. I believe that's still ongoing. I'm not entirely sure. I read the first book in that and absolutely hated it. So I will not be reading that series nor anything else that Tana French puts out in the future. But I know that she is a very beloved author and this is a new series that she started. So I wanted to go ahead and mention it here. Again, because this is a sequel to a series, I don't know if it's a series of companion novels. I don't know if you have to read them in order. I don't want to read anything here for risk of spoiling you just in case you do plan on starting the series. But just know that if you are a Tana French fan, this book in the Cal Hooper series is coming out on the 5th. And I'm pretty sure it does follow a lot enforcement again. I guess Cal Hooper is a member of the Chicago PD. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you like detective fiction or things like that, you might want to check this one out. Again, coming out on the 5th. Moving on into the 12th, we have a historical fiction that I am personally interested in. It is the newest release by Stephanie Dre called Becoming Madam Secretary. Now y'all know I read the book called My Dear Hamilton that was co-written by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. And I really, really loved that story. It was one of my favorite books of 2023. It absolutely blew me away how well they were able to bring to life Eliza Hamilton. And because of that, I'm very interested in reading 
reading more from them, especially as a duo, but I would be willing to check out Stephanie Dre on her own. So this is actually the story of Frances Perkins, who is considered an American heroine because she helped pull the nation out of the Great Depression. Raised on tales of her revolutionary ancestors, Frances Perkins arrives in New York City at the turn of the century, armed with her trusty parasol and an unyielding determination to make a difference. When she's not working with children in the crowded tenements in Hell's Kitchen, Frances throws herself into the social scene in Greenwich Village, befriending an eclectic group of politicians, artists, and activists, including the millionaire socialite Mary Harriman Rumsey, the flirtatious budding author Sinclair Lewis, and the brilliant but troubled reformer Paul Wilson, with whom she falls deeply in love. But when Frances meets a young lawyer named Franklin Delano Roosevelt at a tea dance, sparks fly in all the wrong directions. She thinks he's a rich, arrogant dilettante who gets by on a handsome face and a famous name. He thinks she's a priggish, blue-stocking, and insufferable do-gooder. Neither knows it yet, but over the next 20 years, they will form a historic partnership that will carry them both to the White House. Frances is destined to rise in a political world dominated by men, facing down the Great Depression as FDR's most trusted lieutenant. Even as she struggles to balance the demands of a public career with marriage and motherhood, and when vicious political attacks mount and personal tragedies threaten to derail her ambitions, she must decide what she's willing to do and what she's willing to sacrifice to save a nation. I'm sold. Count me in on this one. It absolutely sounds phenomenal. Stephanie Dre seems like she places a focus on strong women in American history, and I am down for that, especially in a political world that is still not too kind to women. I'm interested to see how Frances Perkins pulled the nation out of the Great Depression, how she partnered with FDR, and everything that she was able to accomplish for America. So this sounds phenomenal to me. It is certainly going on my TBR, and so if you are a fan of historical fiction such as this, please keep your eye out for this on the 12th. One of the most notable, if not the most notable, releases coming out in March is Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff, which is the sequel to Empire of the Vampire. If you're not familiar, Empire of the Vampire is a huge book that begins the saga of Gabriel de Leon, the last silver saint, basically hunters of vampires, and they are trying to save the world from vampire domination, essentially, and it is definitely gruesome, violent, bloody, everything you could want from Jay Kristoff, including his signature sense of humor, and I really enjoyed it. I would definitely need to read a recap before I dove into this one, but I am certainly excited about this. I'm absolutely not going to be reading anything about this book because I do not want to spoil myself for anything or risk spoiling you for the first book if you haven't read it and you might want to, but y'all know how I feel about Jay Kristoff. I love him to death. He's one of my favorite authors of all time, and I'm very much looking forward to this sequel. Another release coming out on the 12th is actually one that I considered including in my March Book of the Month predictions because it sounds like it's going to be a solid literary fiction slash family drama kind of contemporary novel, and it sounded like it would be something right up Book of the Month's alley, but that category was already overflowing and I could not fit in another book. So I guess we will see if this does make the cut over some of the ones that I did feature in that video. But this is a book called Between You and Us by Kendra Broquis. Leona hopes enjoying a rare upscale meal with her husband David will help them begin learning how to live again after their shared tragedy. But when she crosses the threshold of the ridiculously romantic restaurant, she quickly realizes she doesn't belong. It's not only her thrifted dress or the menu printed in Italian, it's all the clues pointing to the fact she's in a different version of her life. The one where she and David accepted all the strings attached to his parents' wealth and power. Instead of struggling to pay rent, she lives in a lavish home with working faucets. She's no longer teaching English to high schoolers, but attending brunch with a bunch of high society busybodies like her mother-in-law. Leona would put more effort into figuring out how to get home, but there's one thing stopping her, a precious little girl with her green eyes and David's curly hair. In this outcome of her life, her daughter Vera lived. Now Leona must weigh the bitter and sweet of each world, choosing between the chance to be with Vera under the impossible expectations of her in-laws and distant husband, or the life altered by grief with the man she loves. Holy cow, that sounds absolutely beautiful. I definitely like the exploration that some of these books have about what would have happened if you had made a different choice, how differently your life could have turned out. That sounds absolutely beautiful. I have never heard of this author before. This could potentially be a debut. I'm not sure, but this is certainly one that is on my radar. And the final release that I want to talk to you about coming out on March 12th is another historical fiction, and I believe it's another World War II historical fiction. This is called The Underground Library by Jennifer Ryan. It says, when new WD librarian Juliet Lansdowne finds that Bethnal Green Library isn't the bustling hub she's expecting, she becomes determined to breathe life back into it. But can she show the men in charge that a woman is up to the task of running it, especially when a confrontation with her past threatens to derail her. Katie Upwood is thrilled to be working at the library, although she's only there until she heads off to university in the fall. But after the death of her beau on the front line and amid tumultuous family strife, she finds herself harboring a life-changing secret with no one to turn to for help. Sophia Bauman, a young Jewish refugee, came to London on a domestic service visa only to find herself working as a maid for a man who treats her abominably. She escapes to the library every chance she can, finding friendship in the literary community and aid in finding her sister who is still trying to flee occupied Europe. When a slew of bombs destroys the library, Juliet relocates the stacks to the local underground station where the city's residents shelter nightly, determined to lend out stories that will keep spirits up. But tragedy after tragedy threatens to unmoor the women and sever the ties to their community. Will Juliet, Kate, and Sophie be able to overcome their own troubles to save the library? Or will the beating heart of their neighborhood be lost forever? That sounds absolutely phenomenal. I am a sucker for World War II historical fiction, and I love that this is one surrounded by books. So this is another one that is on my reader, and I wanted to make sure it was on yours as well. All right, moving on into the 19th, we actually have another release that I'm quite excited for. It is the newest release by Steve 
Steve Cavanaugh called Kill For Me, Kill For You. I have talked about Steve Cavanaugh multiple times on my channel because he writes the Eddie Flynn series, which is a fantastic series of legal thrillers. And this, I believe, is a standalone. This says, one dark evening on New York City's Upper West Side, two strangers meet by chance. Over drinks, Amanda and Wendy realize they have much in common, especially loneliness and an intense desire for revenge against the men who destroy their families. As they talk into the night, they come up with a perfect, if you kill for me, I'll kill for you revenge scenario. In another part of the city, Ruth is home alone when the beautiful brownstone she shares with her husband, Scott, is invaded. She's attacked by a man with piercing blue eyes who disappears into the night. Will she ever be able to feel safe again with the blue-eyed stranger out there? Intricate, heart racing, and from an author who is the real deal, Kill For Me, Kill For You will keep you breathless until the final page. I'm sold. I'm here for it. I will absolutely be picking this up. So this is one that I am definitely highly anticipating, again, coming out on the 19th. Also on the 19th, we have the newest release by Sue Laurie Gentile called The Mystery Writer. She actually wrote a book called The Woman in the Library, and I actually enjoyed it. It wasn't getting the best reviews, but I had a good time with it, and I might be willing to pick this one up. It says, when Theodosia Benton abandons her career path as an attorney and shows up on her brother's doorstep with two suitcases and an unfinished novel, she expects to face a few challenges. What Theo never expects is to be drawn into a hidden literary world in which identity is something that can be lost and remade for the sake of an audience. When her mentor, a highly successful author, is brutally murdered, Theo wants the killer to be found and justice to be served. Then the police begin looking at her brother, Gus, as their prime suspect, and Theo does the unthinkable in order to protect him. But the writer has left a trail, a thread out of the labyrinth in the form of a story. Gus finds that thread and follows it, and in his attempt to save his sister, he inadvertently threatens the foundations of the labyrinth itself. To protect the carefully constructed narrative, Theo Benton and everyone looking for her will have to die. USA Today bestselling author Sulari Gentile takes readers on a roller coaster ride in The Mystery Writer, a literary thriller that turns the world of books and authors upside down and where a writer's voice is a thing to be controlled and weaponized to the peril of everyone who loves a good story. So that sounds very intriguing. I don't know if it's going to contain some of the same elements that the woman in the library had because that book was actually very uniquely told. There were a lot of interesting literary elements to that story and it sounds like this one might have it too. So if you enjoy The Woman in the Library, you might want to keep your eye out for this one on the 19th. Also on the 19th, we have the newest release by Taryn Fisher called Good Hath Gone. I know that Taryn Fisher is a pretty popular author in like the mystery thriller world. I've never personally read anything by her, but I do have a book that was co-authored with Colleen Hoover that I plan to get to. So if you are a fan of Taryn Fisher, keep your eye out for this one. It says, Iris narrowly escaped her pretty popular twin sister's fate as a teen, kidnapped, trafficked, and long gone before the cops agreed to investigate. With no evidence to go on, but a few scattered memories, the case quickly goes cold. Now an adult, Iris wants one bank proof, and if the police still won't help, she'll just have to find it her own way by interning at the isolated Shoal Island Hospital for the criminally insane where secrets lurk in the shadows and are kept under lock and key. But Iris soon realizes that something even more sinister is simmering beneath the surface of the shoal and that the patients aren't the only ones being observed. So we have another thriller set at a mental institution. It seems like that trope is getting more and more popular as time goes on and there's always something shady going on at these institutions, y'all. But again, if you have enjoyed Taryn Fisher, if you like tropes like this, you might want to keep your eye out for this one on the 19th. And the very final one that I want to mention for the 19th is the newest release by Nikki French called Has Anyone Seen Charlotte Salter? So this says, on the day of Alex Salter's 50th birthday party, his wife Charlotte vanishes. Most of the small English village of Glenstead is at the party for hours before anyone realizes she's missing. While Alec brushes off her disappearance, their four children grow increasingly anxious as the cold winter hours become days and she doesn't return. Then their 15-year-old daughter Eddie and her friend Morgan find the body of Morgan's father and the Salter's neighbor, Duncan Ackerley, floating in the river. The police conclude that Duncan and Charlotte were having an affair before he killed her and committed suicide. 30 years later, Morgan Ackerley returns to Glenstead with his older brother to make a podcast based on their shared tragedy with the Salters. Alec, stricken with dementia, is entering an elder care facility while Eddie helps put his affairs in order. But when the Ackerleys ask to interview the Salters, the entire town gets caught up in the unresolved case. Allegations fly, secrets come to light, and a suspicious fire leads to a murder. With the podcast making national news, London sends Detective Inspector Maud O'Connor to Glenstead to take over the investigation. She will stop at nothing to uncover the truth as a new and terrifying picture of what really happened to Charlotte Salter and Duncan Ackerley emerges. So that sounds both fascinating and generic at the same time. It's going to have a podcast element element, which as we know is a very popular trope these days, almost to the point where it's getting overdone, but I still really enjoy it, especially if it is well done. And it definitely sounds like we're going to have some angst and drama here, as it sounds like two families are going to be involved and the wife of one is said to have been sleeping with the father of another, and now they're both dead and complications are ensuing. So this could be one that I'm intrigued enough to pick up. I was intrigued enough to go ahead and put it on this list, and I wanted to bring it to your attention coming out on the 19th. And then moving on into the last week of March, on March 26th, we have the newest release by Heather Gutenkopf called Everyone is Watching, and this is another Book that I'm highly anticipating because I really enjoy Heather Gutenkopf as an author so far and I'm interested in picking up more from her. This says, the best friend, the confidant, the senator, the boyfriend, the executive. Five contestants have been chosen to compete for $10 million on the game show One Lucky Winner. The catch, none of them knows what or who to expect and it will be live streamed all over the world. Completely secluded in an estate in Northern California with strict instructions not to leave the property and zero contact with the outside world, the competitor
characters start to feel a little too isolated. When long-kept secrets begin to rise to the surface, the contestants realize this is no longer just a reality show. Someone is out for blood, and the game can't end until the world knows who the contestants really are. I'm very much digging the vibes of this. We're gonna have that isolation aspect, which I love so much, and I'm interested to see what she can do with this trope. It sounds like this could be a little bit like The Escape Room by Megan Golden, but I hope that this is done better, because even though I love Megan Golden, The Escape Room left a lot to be desired. I wanted more of the game aspect, and I'm really hoping that we get that here. So we have, it sounds like, a locked room mystery, isolated, somebody's gonna wind up dead, we're not gonna know who and why they did it, and it sounds like all of the contestants are hiding some secrets, and somebody wants those secrets revealed, and I am honestly here for it. I will definitely be reading more from Heather Gutenkopf as an author, and she could certainly become an autobi thriller author for me for sure. Also on the 26th, we have what sounds like it's going to be like a little bit of a cozy mystery kind of thing. It's called How to Solve Your Own Murder by Kristen Perrin. It says it's for fans of Knives Out and the Thursday Murder Club, an enormously fun mystery about a woman who spends her entire life trying to prevent her foretold murder only to be proven right 60 years later when she is found dead in her sprawling country estate. Now it's up to her great niece to catch the killer. So it definitely sounds like it's going to be a good fun time. Probably nothing too dark, too harrowing, or anything like that. This is one that I've seen going around, and so I wanted to mention it here in case this seems like it's going to be right up your alley, because it definitely sounds like it could be a cute time. I'm not necessarily a big fan of the cozy mystery type vibe, but I'm kind of interested in the plot to this one, so you'll have to let me know what you think. Again, coming out on the 26th. All right, and the very last book I want to mention today in this video is actually the third book in the Aunties series by Jesse Q. Sutanto, which are other cozy mystery vibe type stories. This one is called The Good, The Bad, The Aunties. Again, I really don't want to read anything about the synopsis of this because I do believe it's going to contain spoilers for the first book or two, but if you've enjoyed Jesse Q. Sutanto in the past and her cozy mysteries, if you like the Auntie series, this next one is coming out on the 26th for you. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are some of the releases that I wanted to mention for March. As always, this list is not meant to be comprehensive and it's definitely not meant to be complete, especially as I mentioned a lot of other new releases coming out in that book of the month prediction video. So please comment down below and let me know if there are any new releases that I missed that you would like to share with anybody else. I'm sure that they would very much appreciate that information. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, please go ahead and leave me a dice emoji in honor of Finley Donovan 4 that is coming out in March. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week on Wednesdays and Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.